All right, with us today we have Joe Dooling. Joe Dooling is from Helena, Montana. He's going to be running for the North Central Fort seat. So, Joe, maybe you can start off with just telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, your business at home. Uh, so, yeah, my wife Julie and I farm in the Helena Valley. We have uh, currently have eight pivots that we farm. Uh, we have about 150 mama cows. My wife's in the legislature. Uh, she's vice chair of House Ag. Um, and uh, we grow malt barley, beer, and hay, or malt barley, beef, and hay. I think we're always sitting in your beer and burger covered for you. Um, and um, um, for me, the, the uh, my industry involvement, so to speak, I guess, if you will, uh, involved the stock growers. I, I chaired the PAC for a while, the malt ball for a while. I'm still on the board of it. When I, when I ran for Congress, I, I stepped off and being chair. It wasn't good. Um, and, uh, you know, I took the pack from having about seven or eight hundred dollars to up to, we were one of the most funded packs last time around to 16,000 bucks. It was a lot of money for a pack. <clears throat> um, and so, because my involvement, it's been the soccer that was on the foundation for a while. So I've been around for a while. I've been kicking around a bit. Excellent. <laughs> well, we are happy that you are here and considering running for the board. Uh, chat with us a little bit about what you think uh, your top priority would be if you are elected. I think all of our top priorities are the same is how do we advance our industry, how we keep our industry viable. Uh, and I, I think we have some really short term issues and we have some long term issues. And in Montana, our short term issues really are, are revolving around the drought and our cattle And, um, you know, we're seeing some reports from long range weather folks that you know, we could have another summer like we had last year. Uh, how do, how do we keep people involved? How do we keep the industry going forward? It's going to be some short-term challenges that we're going to have to work out. Um, you know, how do we keep membership going? How do we convince, there's a lot of folks, and especially even in my county, there's a lot of cattle in my county that are not members of stock orders. So we got to get involved and um, we just got to reach out to them and uh, get our membership up. And, and, and I always say <clears throat> our best convention we've had in the last decade for stock orders was the year we announced the China deal. And some things happened that didn't happen. But the point being that when our organization leads, people follow. And so we got to get out and meet. And, um, um, you know, there's two packet plants going in, Idaho Falls. I think we should talk one of them in the review. So that's my opinion. I agree. So one of the things I think is just important for people to know is um, why, why would you be interested in serving on start the board. You talked about priorities, but so that's a great question. And 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 I I've, I've thought about myself before. Like if I had to write down three reasons why I'm going to first stop, what would my answer be? And um, that's a ch tough question. And I, and I often wonder if everybody answers it the same. And in some ways, I wonder if we need to work as an organization on our branding. But why? What are the three reasons why it's everybody knows? why they should be a member of the For me, the biggest reason is that it's, it's a great time to be around some fellow producers. To me, that's my biggest value. And, um, and, that, and I know the advocacy part is really strong, but for me, it's a little bit different because I can nudge my legislator at dinner time, right? <laughs> so, so it's a little bit different for me, but, you have an advantage there. <laughs> but, but the point being is the advocacy side. Of it. And, I, and so what I hope I bring to stock growers is I, I'm the definition of an urban interface farm, and I've got close to 200 acres in the Alabama. And what does it mean to be an urban interface farm? There's, getting, there's a lot of us now days that are being urban interface farmers. Bring that perspective from the urban interface side of things. But also, um, one of the things that I've always done on the board is, 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 is challenge us to why we I think inertia is, is, a, is a good thing, but it's also a killer for the organization. So, I hope to bring some, 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 you know, why are we doing this? Is this the best thing to do this? Um, you know, I've advocated for a long time that every other year when the legislature, uh, we should have a convention in Helena and fill that return to the capital with governments so that legislators know that stock growers are watching. And, you know, the last time around we had 72, and I think it's bigger now because Belgrade and double A. So it's probably 77 house seats touch the AA school district. With this redistricting that we're going to have after 
now, it's going to be eight. The Texan, some of those Eastern Montana seeds of our cattle are, are going to be huge. And um, there's less and less cow boots on the desks and all. And so we have to remember this. Our influence, surprisingly enough, our influence on the state and on the budget and in terms of cattle has not changed much over the last 20 years. We still have, we're still a four and a half, five billion dollar industry with a value added side coming on it. We're still providing that economic uh, uh, receipts and, and, and rents to the state, to, to the legislature. We're just having less and less voice in the county. So my white wife, interesting, she said in the house ag, they asked, how many people come from the farm? None of the Democrats raised it. So in the Montana legislature, there's not one Democrat in the legislature that comes from the farm. So. You kind of hit on it um, with some of your other answers, but can you just wrap up the interview? What are you most excited about for our organization um, in the coming years? Well, I like a challenge. You know, I started my farm in operation. I started with nothing. I didn't. I built it all myself. I, I leased 200 acres and have a, a tractor. I, uh, so I like the challenge. We have some really big challenges. I think there's no surprise. I, I don't have to tell you guys anything that I don't know. There's some really big challenges facing our industry. We've, we've gone in the last 30 years from beef being the number one source of protein for the average American consumer to be number two, number three. And so we have to we have a lot of image problems we have to fix that are that are not you know, not actually truthful, but that we have image things we have to fix. We have to uh, fix how we advertise, we have to fix a lot of things that we do. To, to get ourselves back into that position. We want to be the preferred choice of protein when the consumers go to the store. So, it's right. a challenge. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, sitting down with us, um, giving our members a preview of who you are and what you're about. And as a reminder, this is Joe Dooley, who is the Cent North Central District candidate. Right. Thanks a lot, Joe. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.